Hi everyone, this is Saeed Rashad and welcome to Selton Delta Secrets. In the last video, we talked about how to teach the language systems, vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation, and functional language. We talked about the PPP, TTT, text-based guided discovery, and the TBL. Today, we're going to look at how to teach the language skills, receptive skills, and productive skills. So let's begin. We've said before that teaching the language systems is different from teaching the language skills. And even teaching the receptive skills is different from teaching the productive skills. Let's see how. Okay, I know many teachers are familiar with the shapes or frameworks of the receptive skills, listening and reading. They know that we have to have a pre-listening or pre-reading stage, a while listening or while reading stage, a post-listening or post-reading stage. But some teachers might not be aware of the two main stages of the productive skills lessons, of the writing lesson or the speaking lesson. So today we're going to talk about both of them. So let's begin with the receptive skills, listening and reading. In the listening or reading focused lesson, we have three main stages. We have the pre, while, and post. In the pre-listening stage or the pre-reading stage, we have two or three Substages. They can be two, they can be three. There is no like um, uh, fixed number. They are flexible. You can have all of them or you can have some of them. So it's better to start with a lead in to activate the students' uh, schemata about the topic and to generate their interest uh, on the topic. And then you can have a prediction task through a picture or some questions just to. Uh, allow the students to predict what they are going to read or what they are going to listen to. Then you can have a, a PTV, which is pre-teach vocabulary. You teach some vocabulary, which might block the students' understanding when listening or reading, or which might help the students do the task when, when it comes to uh, while listening or while reading. These stages, as I told you, or these sub-stages, as I told you, are uh, flexible. You can have the prediction task before the pre-teach vocabulary. You can have the pre-teach vocabulary before the prediction task. You can have only a lead-in and a pre-teach vocabulary. You can have a lead-in and a prediction and you don't have to have a pre-teach vocabulary if you don't have any blocking words. After these three sub-stages, you move on to the while listening or while reading. And in this stage, you need to go over the sub-skills. You need to go over listening for just or just reading, you need to go over uh, reading for specific information or reading for detail. So after listening or reading for just, just is a must, okay? But listening or reading for specific information, listening or reading for details, it's not a must, but you know, it depends on the text because not all texts lend themselves to all the sub skills. So you can have the just reading or listening, then you can have one or two of these sub skills. After the while listening or while reading, after training the students to do the sub skills, you need to move on to one of the productive skills, which is writing or speaking. You allow the students to move from receptive to productive. So they produce the language rather than just responding to a reading text or a listening text. After that, of course, you need to give some feedback and error correction, depends on the task you have writing or speaking. So that's pretty much it about listening and reading. We might talk about each one in detail in coming videos. So now let's move on to talk about the productive skills lesson, writing or speaking. We have two main stages in these lessons. The first one is the preparation for writing or speaking. And the second one is the writing task or the speaking task itself. Each one of these two main stages has some sub stages, which are also flexible and you can change between them. So you start with a lead in as uh, preferable. You know, you need to activate your students' prior knowledge and you need to generate their interest in the topic. Then you move on to teaching your students some useful language that could be grammar, that could be vocabulary, something that you think students might need to use while doing the writing or the speaking task. And also you need or you can expose your students to a reading text before they write or a speaking task before they speak. So for example, if they are going to write a friendly letter, you can expose your learners to 
a friendly letter sample or a model so that they see how it looks. And then you ask them to produce a friendly letter themselves. If they are going to talk about a speaking task, like for example, they're going to talk about their favorite movie, then they can watch a video or listen to two people talking about their favorite movies. Uh, as I told you, the, the stages are flexible, so you can have uh, the exposure uh, substage before the useful language, or you can have the useful language before the exposure. Okay, here for the useful language, I just want to tell something, because some people teach the useful language the way they teach the target language in a system lesson, and this is a big mistake. Remember, the useful language is not target language. So you don't have to go extensively through the meaning, the form, and the pronunciation. Even students don't have to use this useful language you give them. After that, you assign a task, a speaking task or writing task, whether it's focusing on fluency or focusing on accuracy, whether you're using the product uh, approach to writing, the model approach, or the process approach to writing. It depends on whatsoever approach you are using. It depends on your aim of the task, whether you're focusing on accuracy or focusing on fluency. After that, of course, you need to give some feedback based on the student's performance of the task. And you can also have a kind of repetition to the task if you want students to master it, but to avoid like disengagement or being bored uh, from the part of the students, you can make some changes. You can change the pattern of interaction or you can even change uh, some prompts in the task. That's pretty much it about writing and speaking. And yes, we can have a whole lesson about writing and we can have a whole lesson about speaking and I can show you some lesson plans and so on. So stay tuned and wait for coming videos. I would like to tell something about the lesson shapes in CELTA and DELTA because some people might be confused. In CELTA, you are teaching the skill itself. But in Delta, you will be teaching the sub-skills. So I remember when I was doing my Delta module 2, I was doing a reading lesson. We might talk about it in a coming video. And I went through the PPP. I was teaching, like I was presenting the sub-skills and then uh, students practiced the sub-skills and at, at the end, they had time to produce uh, uh, some language. So uh, in Delta, because in Delta you focus on the sub-skills, but in CELTA you focus on the skill itself. I also had a colleague in the course, Delta Module 2, she was doing a speaking lesson and she was talking about the gap fillers or prefabricated fillers. And she went through the PPP, she presented the gap fillers and then students practiced and then they had production at the end. Don't worry, we will look at each and every one of these skills in coming videos. We will talk about listening, reading, writing, and speaking, each one separately. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and like and follow the page on Facebook so that you are not missing any of the videos. Thank you so much for watching. Like the video if you like it and share it with all your friends. See you next time.